back to the New York studio. I'm Max with Hobby King, and today we have another product profile for you. And we're gonna be talking about the Quantum Axe 180, the newest mini quad frame offering from Hobby King. All right guys, so I'm gonna take you through all the components that you're gonna to need to complete this build. All of these components can be found at hobbyking.com and links for them will be in the description of this video. We're going to show you how I did the build and then we're gonna take these guys outside and fly them. Now I just wanna mention that this frame can be built many different ways. However, the way I'm gonna show you is the way we decided to do it. It's been working out really well for us, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so obviously the first thing you're gonna need is the Quantum Axe 180 frame. So it comes in this unassuming box when you open it up, you have your baggie with your standoffs and screws so you can separate your top plate from the frame. You get your camera mount. Then the main show, you get your Axe 180 frame, nice three millimeter carbon frame. Then you get your top plate here. And you also get a nice little sheet showing you how to put the frame together and all the different parts that are going to be in the box. So component wise, what I'm using in this build, I'm going to be using the Multistar Elite 2204 2300 kV motor with our 20 amp Afro race spec ESCs with a built in BEC. That's going to be powering our Naze 32 Rev 5 flight controller. I'm going to be using one of our Hextronic mini hex distribution boards and this is important i'll show you why later when it comes to mounting that flight controller for our receiver we're going to be using one of our free sky d4r2 receivers in cppm mode and that's going to be coupled with our again free sky tyrannus trusty radio always using it and then we have our uh, fat shark fpv system we're going to be using a 250 milliwatt fat shark transmitter with our 700 TVL CMOS camera, and of course, an Immersion RC circular polarized antenna. We're also gonna be using our Multistar 1400 4S packs. Really great packs for these little multi-rotors. And then little bits that you're gonna need, I'm gonna be using some of our nylon standoffs, nylon screws, and nylon nuts to mount our flight controller and power distribution board in the frame. And I'm also going to be using some of our Diatone 4045 bullnose props. So as a little bonus, I like putting 3D printed bits on all of my mini quads. So I printed an XT60 holder for the back of the quad using our Turnigy mini fabricator. So we're going to show you a print on that and throw it on there for nice neat wiring. All right guys, so that about wraps it up for components. We're gonna get started on the build here, and now I'm not gonna go step by step with everything that I'm doing, but if I come to an important section that I think you guys should know about to set this frame up nicely, we're gonna stop, we'll get some cameras on it, and I'll show you how it's going. So let's get started on the build. So with this frame, it's actually made for a micro flight controller like the CC3D Atom. However, I know a lot of people like to use full-size 36 millimeter flight controllers like the Naze or the full-size CC3D. So I was trying to figure out a way to get the naze to be mounted on this. And one thing I noticed was that our power distribution board has four holes that line up perfectly with the slots on the frame. So what I did was I drilled out four of those pads since I don't need them because this is a hexacopter distribution board. And then what I'm going to be using are our M3 nylon standoffs to mount the power distribution board to the frame and then stacked on top of it using the 36 millimeter mounting holes that are in the board, I'm gonna have our naze on top. And here's the finished product. We have our PDB mounted to our frame and our naze mounted to our PDB. Nice and sturdy, rock solid, should be great. All right, so now that we have our power distribution board and our flight controller mounting set up, we're gonna go ahead and install our motors and ESCs. Now on a small frame like this, you're not gonna need this much wire and cabling excess just clut cluttering up your frame. So what I'm gonna be doing is direct soldering our motor leads to our ESC. I'm gonna be decasing the ESC, cutting our motor leads a little shorter, and then direct soldering them again to our ESC. Now, just one little tidbit here before you go and do that, since you can't easily change the motor direction after you've soldered it directly to your speed control, use your servo tester to check and identify the correct rotation of your motors. So it's really simple, just plug your ESC into your uh, servo tester, 
and power it. And so just note which wire from your motor is connected to which color wire on your ESC and then just go in order, red, yellow, black, or whatever your ESC color is and solder each motor wire onto that pad. Really simple, works really well, and it keeps the clutter down on your frame. So quick tidbit of info here for you guys looking to protect your D4R2 antenna wires. Take a really big zip tie, attach it to your frame, and then you're going to run your antenna wires up the side of the zip tie and using little bits of heat shrink, attach the antenna wires to the zip tie, keeps them out of the way and protected from your props and other things you're gonna run into while you're flying. So the build is basically done. Now before we go ahead and install all of our FPV gear, I like to go ahead and set up my flight controller. So we're using a Naze 32, as I mentioned earlier, and I'm gonna be flashing it using Clean Flight, and I'm gonna be putting Beta Flight from Boris B on it. I like to fly that firmware. It's been working really well for us. I have it in our other Axe 180, and it's really, really awesome. So that takes about five seconds, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. that wraps it up on the build for the Quantum Axe 180. We have two of them set up here. Uh, they both run the same FPV transmitter, however, the only real difference is that I have the 700 TBL from Fat Shark that comes on the mount that's adjustable, and on this guy, I'm using the included angled camera mount with another 700 TBL just direct mounted to it. So we're gonna throw some props on this guy and take him outside and fly him. Alex, you're just above him. whoa! Maneuverability. Pretty, pretty nice. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. It's the first time for you guys flying something this small. Yeah. All right, so that's the Quantum Axe 180. Super maneuverable, tiny little frame. Again, you got to remember that it's just a frame that you're going to get in the box, and it really comes down to the equipment you put in it and the tuning on your flight controller. But with the equipment we chose and using Beta Flight with the Naze 32, this frame really flies well. Super fun to fly around. Again, really nice and compact. Uh, Alex was chasing me a little bit with it, and he really enjoyed flying it. Alex, what do you think about it? Super portable little frame. You're going to see a bunch more of him in the weekly updates coming up, because I think he's our new favorite guy. Yeah, and I remember one thing that you did mention was that with the stock camera mount, with the lean back built into it, it wasn't enough for you to keep up with me, and you wanted to have a little bit more camera angle in there. And you can always modify that, or we could 3D print a mount for you there. But one thing we did do on the second axe that we built, is we have one of the adjustable Fat Shark cameras that sort of comes on this little mount that swivels up and down, so you can get a little more camera angle uh, for you for your flying right there. All right guys, so that wraps it up for the Quantum Axe 180. If you're looking for a great portable compact quad frame smaller than 250 millimeters, make sure you check this guy out. Remember to stay tuned to Hobby King Live and stay tuned for more product profiles.